So today I've decided to take things back a step. We all know about trying to catch bigger and better fish. In fact, this whole channel is about trying to help people catch more fish, bigger fish, break your PB. But today is gonna to be very different. We are um, going back to basics. I'm fishing on a tiny little stream which weaves through some beautiful woodland and my aim is actually to catch micro fish. Welcome to an introduction to micro fishing. No way, Josh. Wow, that is a beauty. Well, here is a little net full of fish from just one swim. And that's the magic of doing this style of fishing is from one little spot on a tiny stream, you can catch a whole range of species, a real variety of fish. Here I've got chub, a perch with its spiky dorsal and even a little trout as well. Amazing fishing, but there's plenty more river to explore. So I'm gonna head off and look elsewhere. One of the best things about this style of fishing, micro fishing, is that you don't need very much money, time, or tackle. You also don't need a particularly expensive syndicate ticket or club membership. A lot of these little streams around the country are free. As long as you get landowners permission, you can fish them. And lots and lots of streams all over the place have got fish in them. It's just about trying to find what sort of areas they live in. But the tackle that I've actually brought today is very, very basic. As you can see, I can hold the rod and the net, which has got all my other bits in it, and I can walk with no bags or anything. It's really nice, uh, lightweight fishing. The, the rod that I've got is a nine foot uh, quiver tip rod, three quarter of an ounce uh, quiver tip. is lovely and soft, so you can see the taps. You can see the bites from those small fish. A little reel with, I think, some four pound line. Split shot pinched on there. Short length of line down to my hook, which at the moment, is a size 14, but I'll, uh, I'll often go smaller. Talking of going smaller, I acknowledge that it's not always easy to tie very small hooks. So, in my little tackle box that I've brought today, my little pouch, I've got some ready-tied hook links. These are three pound line tied to a size 20 hook. When I go as small as a size 20, it's very fiddly. So it's quite nice to just have a pack of eight rigs that are all ready tied and ready to go. And that means it's a lot less fiddly um, to do it yourself. In there, I've also got a disgorger, some split shot, uh, just the bare necessities for this style of fishing. Also within my net is a little bait box with some maggots in it. Maggots have got to be my number one go-to bait for natural venues like this. Small fish, Roach, perch, dace, minnows, trout. I'm trying to think of some more, but I can't. They all eat. They all eat maggots, and they're a great bait. They're a great catch-all bait. They're not very selective. They won't necessarily pick out big fish, but you you get bites from anything on the maggots. And that's it. I, I mean, I've got some bread there, as you can see. Bread sometimes a good hook bait if the tiny, tiny minnows are getting to the maggots too quickly. You can put a bigger piece of bread on and get through minnows. But I haven't actually caught any minnows yet today. Anyway, there's one more spot over my shoulder. I say there's one more spot. There's probably hundreds of spots further up this stream, uh, which I'll rove, rove amongst uh, through the day. But yeah, there's one spot here, which looks really decent. It's got a decent amount of depth. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for where the stream sort of goes through some faster bits and then drops off into some slower, deeper water. That is where you'll normally find the fish. So I'm gonna head off and give it a go up there. So many bites to be had on places like this. There's so many fish down there. Micro chub or chublet as you'll hear most people call them. I'm gonna see if I can get another one. I, I just made two casts. The first cast 
uh, was a trout. Second cast was a chub. I'm actually going to try a piece of bread this time. This swim is so full of fish. Sometimes you can just change the bread and find something a bit different. Just watching the uh, rod tip is enough. You tighten up the line a little bit until you can feel the split shot and then just watch that rod tip for nibbles. Any sort of solid tap is worth striking at. Oh, there we go. There's not very many places I can think of where you could come and just get bites all day long. Following the winding stream down towards the ocean has brought us to a location where Josh, the fishing tutorials cameraman, has found a new friend, or rather two new friends. Well, the good thing about fishing on small streams especially is you literally never know what is gonna live in them. Of course, you've got the sort of most expected species like chublets, little trout, roach. The number of times I come out and fish places like this and just randomly got and caught, oh, what's this? Well, there's a new species, a roach. <laughs> but I said, what I was about to say was is that the number of times I've gone fishing new places and then randomly caught a carp or a barbel or, I don't know, a bullhead or something a bit weird. Sometimes you get gudgeon, all sorts. It's, there's just endless species that you can catch from places like this. Which means they don't get boring. And what I actually tend to do is not do this style of fishing all the time. You know, we make videos. We teach people how to fish on this channel and we try and entertain fishermen on our main channel and catching fish this big probably isn't the best move, uh, not the best thing to do all the time. But what I tend to do is we, we, we get to travel to some of the best places. We get to fish some of the coolest locations, catch some of the biggest fish. And sometimes it can spoil you a little bit. It can start to just become the norm. You're like, well, I always catch fish like this and therefore a big carp or pike doesn't excite you like it used to when you were a kid and that's where places like this come in every now and then I will come out on a session and fish somewhere tiny use tiny hooks minuscule little baits and thin line and go right back to basics oh what is this oh it's got me snagged oh my goodness oh my that's a bit better what is that it's chub. That's a chub. <laughs> yeah, it's actually not a bad one. Uh, first fish today where I really do need to use my net. But yeah, uh, you come back to basics, fish something somewhere like this, and then all of a sudden, a chub like that is a miracle. It's like you're a kid again. You're just loving it. There we go. Hooks come out. And that might not be a, a monster, but on a day like today, everything that a fisherman could want. Plenty of action, loads of variety, and loads of bites. A prime example of what I was just saying was just earlier in the day, once we'd caught some little chublets, a uh, little trout and a perch, we spotted a few carp uh, in the lake just further up the hill. And me and Josh, the cameraman, were like, should we try for him? And I looked at my little rod and tiny hook and thought, go on, let's give it a try. And we managed to catch a couple. We had a fish each. Now, those fish were by no stretch of the imagination massive. They weren't giant fish, but because we had just spent a few minutes catching micro fish and appreciating those small species, we went and caught those two carp and we were losing our minds. You know, we, just, we were just loving it. I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind. As your fishing life progresses, as you fish more places and catch more fish, it's easy to become desensitized or numbed and just think that you need bigger and better to continue enjoying your fishing when you really don't. Sometimes you can go right back to the start, 
fish like this, fish somewhere small and insignificant and catch relatively insignificant little fish and just remind yourself of what it was like when you first discovered fishing. <laughs>